I hope you're all well. So today we're going to do knockout shadow text. It's a project I love doing and I've done a few tutorials on how you can do it in design space. However, feedback says that some people struggle with design space and they also struggle with the fact that quite often in design space, the way that I do it, you can't control the, uh, the amount of shadow you get and the other way in which you can do it that I don't show, it's often messy and it just doesn't look right. So you can use an external program, A, to make it slightly easier, and B, to control how large or how small you want your shadow to be. We're going to use Inkscape today. It is a free to use program. I'm not going to lie, I have a very love-hate relationship with Inkscape. In fact, we don't love each other and it really hates me. I find it really temperamental, really unreliable. We just don't get on. So I don't use it that often. However, if I actually found it to be reliable and it didn't always crash on me and I didn't have problems with it all the time, I would use it a lot more. And there are people that get on brilliant with Inkscape. So it is worth giving it a download. It's free and it's worth having a play. Projects like this, when you're doing offsets and you're doing shadows, you do get a lot more control in a free to use program like Inkscape. There are pay to use programs you can use such as Illustrator and Photoshop, but of course they are paid and they are quite expensive. When you come into Inkscape, you'll see it looks like this. The first thing I'm going to do is grab the magnifying glass and this little rectangle here, I'm just going to zoom in and make it bigger. And I'm actually going to work within that rectangle. The first thing I want to do is grab some text. So I'm going to select the text button. I'm going to come up to where my fonts are and I'm going to select Times New Roman. Now for this you can use a lot of different fonts. Times New Roman is a really good font to use as is Autumn Regular and Impact as well. They're really uniform fonts. So for this you do want quite a uniform font for your base layer but any kind of good font will do. You just don't want a cursive one. I'm going to select that font and I'm going to select anywhere within that rectangle and I'm going to type my word and I'm going to do it all in capitals. I have two options to make my text larger. I can either choose the actual largeness or the point, for example. I don't know what you call this, but it's like the, it automatically changes it. Or if we come up to this arrow here, you'll see we immediately get lots of arrows around our word. If I hold down my control key and then click on one of these corner arrows, I can drag out my word and keep it completely in proportion. So the next thing I want to do is get my other text line. So I'm just going to grab that text again and I'm going to click anywhere in that rectangle. The reason I click first is that if I just come straight in and change the font, it will change this one. So make sure you actually click within that rectangle before you go to change your font. I'm going to search for I Love Glitter, which is a fantastic font to use for this program. You can get it free from sites like Defont, and you can also get it paid with a commercial license from somewhere like Creative Fabrica, and I will link to the Creative Fabrica in the description below. You do need to work with glyphs for this, but working with glyphs is nice and easy in Inkscape. First thing I'm going to do is actually write my text. I'm then going to go down to my window search and I'm going to search for the character map. So the character map is where you'll find all your beautiful swirls and glyphs and all those additional things you see in all those lovely fonts that you can purchase or download for free. When you come in, you'll get a screen that looks like this and you may find that you do have some of those swirls and extra characters. However, it's always worth checking to see if there are any that are hidden. So if you make sure that advanced view is selected, come down to group by and click that drop down menu. And we're going to come all the way to Unicode sub range. If we select that, another box will appear and we're going to scroll all the way down to private use characters. And you will see that there will most likely be some hidden characters in there for you to choose from. 
so it's always worth checking to see if there's any hidden characters. The first character I want to use is this one, so I'm going to select and copy, and I'm not going to close my character map down, I'm just going to reduce it. So where I want to add my character, I'm going to make sure that I've got selected, so I'm literally just going to go in front of the letter I want. I'm going to right click my mouse and select paste. And you'll see that unlike in Design Space, where you'll have to put everything together, in Inkscape, it will automatically add your characters correctly to your text. So you don't need to do any ungrouping and moving around. It does it all for you. It's brilliant. And then I want to add the same character here. So again, I'm going to paste. I want to reopen my character map, get rid of this one by simply deleting it. And then I'm going to select this character here, choose select and copy. Again, where I want it to go, I'm going to paste. And then I want it to go in between these two words as well. So I'm simply going to paste. Really nice and easy to work with glyphs. And then before I do anything, I'm just going to come in and change the colour. So it's a separate colour to my other text. I'm then just going to bring it up to my base layer and just roughly work out where I want the placement to be. And then I'm going to size this layer up. Again, you'll see it's got this box around it and it's got these arrows. So I'm simply going to hold down my control key and then pull out and it will keep it perfectly in sync for me. Once I'm happy with it, I can then separate these two layers again. So before we do anything, we've got a few things that we need to do with each of these layers and you must do this part for each of them. It's really important. So we're going to select our base word first. We're going to come up to path, which is up along the top here. And we're going to select object to path. We're then going to select object and select ungroup. When we ungroup, you'll see that our letters now have individual boxes going around them. Now, if I don't need to do anything, I can just move straight on to the next step. However, I want to move my Y slightly. It's a little bit further away than the rest of my letters. So the first thing I need to do is just select my Y. And then I'm just going to use my arrow key to move it slightly closer and to keep it perfectly in line. Once I'm happy, I can select my entire word, although it is as individual letters. I'm going to come up to path and I'm going to select union, which is Inkscape's equivalent of weld in design space. And once I select union, you'll see we end up with one complete box around. Now we must do the same for this one. So I'm going to select my text I'm going to come to path, object to path, then I'm going to select object, ungroup it, and you'll see when I ungroup we end up with these individual boxes. Now I don't need to do anything to this, it's perfect as it is, so I'm then going to go straight to path and union, and of course because I've not clicked off that, I don't need to select it, but if at any point I click away from the text, I need to make sure that I'm clicking this arrow here and I'm then selecting the text that I want to do something to. So in this case, it's union. With my text still selected, I'm going to again come up to path and I'm going to choose linked offset. And when I select that, you'll see that I lose those arrows and I end up with a small little diamond. And if I just come over the text, you'll see it'll change colour slightly from pink to red. So before I do anything, I want to come down to my colours and I'm going to choose this teal colour here. And you'll see we get a very faint outline of blue. If I come up to where that diamond is, and I hold down my shift key on my keyboard and then I click on that diamond, I can start creating my shadow. 
and I can go really really big or I can go really small it's completely up to me when I let go of my mouse you'll see that we've still got that that broken box around it which is exactly what we want you'll also notice we've got small white areas within some of my shadow so we're going to come up to path and we're going to choose break apart which is just here and you may find that you end up with all these nodes come up it's absolutely fine the only thing you want to make sure is that your text remains the color you chose so pink and you've got that blue shadow around if the text for example changes to blue then you've got a problem and you're going to need to go back a few steps but as long as you follow as I'm doing you'll be absolutely fine without clicking anything you need to come back straight up to path and you're going to select union we're then going to select our solid arrow and we're going to just move our shadow layer and our text layer apart and you'll see that our shadow layer is completely solid which is what we want we're then going to bring our shadow layer up to our text and we can place it wherever we want to place it you can do it at the bottom at the top a bit towards the middle it's completely up to you I'm going to select both of my text so my shadow and my base layer I'm going to come up to object and then go down to align and distribute and you'll see I have this box come up and this is where I can align everything so this third one in is just a line and center basically. So I'm going to click on that. And if I want to move it just a little bit, which I do, I can just select the shadow and then just move it slightly. And there's perfect. That's exactly where I want it. I then need to select both my shadow and my base, come up to path. And I'm going to select difference and when I click difference it's very similar to slice so I'm going to end up slicing my shadow into my base layer so I can select difference and there we go I've then got my shadow in my base layer I can select my text and bring it up and I like to use my keyboard arrows I struggle with my mouse to place it so I will come in and manually do it using my keyboard and there we go simple and easy all I'm going to do is go to file save I always like to make sure it goes into my pictures so it's easy to find you'll see it's set to Inkscape SVG just leave it as that and then give it a name we can then come into design space select upload upload image browse select the file you want you can give it a name and a tag and then save i can then select that and insert to my canvas and then able to make it the size i want depending on the blank it's going on and i can also ungroup it if i want to but i don't have to as long as it's not attached which it shouldn't be you can go straight to make it but i always like to ungroup it once i've sized it we can then go to make it you'll see we've got two layers and i'm going to do mine in vinyl we can select continue we can choose our machine i'm using my maker but you can use any of the explore family your air or your joy for this i can browse all materials and then go down to vinyl and select the vinyl that i'm going to use I'm going to be using two different types of vinyl, two different colors. So I do need to make sure that I change my cut setting in between each layer. 